said that sound is 50% of the video experience. No matter what kind of content you create, you've probably noticed that bad audio quality can easily ruin 100% of that experience. And while you can hide behind music to some degree, properly recorded sound is one of the most important elements of any video. So how do you get that? I'm Alex Knickerbocker. I record, edit, and mix sound at the major studio level. Professional sound is much easier to achieve by recording with the mix in mind. So today, I wanna to show you some fundamentals and audio samples of one of the most versatile audio tools out there, the wireless lavalier mic. Lavs or lapel mics allow you to record with total independence from camera. This means you can capture consistent dialogue from all angles, regardless of whether you're close up or distant, moving or static. They offer some unique benefits over other kinds of microphones. Lavs are tiny enough to use where other recording gear would be too large to fit. They can be concealed under clothing or hidden in plain sight. And when used with wireless systems, you can place lav mics everywhere you might need to get broadcast quality sound. This means they're useful for all types of content, from vlogging and interviews, all the way up to live performances and full-scale film productions. You'll wanna keep a few specifics in mind for selecting a lav and wireless system. First is the mic itself. The smaller they are, the easier they are to conceal. If you plan on hiding a lav in clothing, use one that's more sensitive to high frequencies. Fabric can muffle audio, so you can compensate with the right mic choice. Lavaliers like the MKE-1 and MKE-2 even come with accessory caps that can brighten their sound, which is ideal for use under multiple layers of clothing or heavy fabrics. The materials your lav is made of are also important. A stainless steel reinforced cable like the one on the MKE-2 is extremely durable and great for demanding use day in and day out. Even thinner, more flexible cables are available with the MKE-1, which helps minimize handling noise and makes them easier to position and conceal. MKE mics all feature an umbrella diaphragm to keep sweat from causing problems with the capsule, while locking terminations keep mics from disconnecting unexpectedly. And while directional lavs exist, because these mics are used in such close proximity to your sound source, I generally prefer an omnidirectional pickup pattern for their natural, consistent sound quality. Now, there are a few different types of transmission options when it comes to the wireless systems that LAVs can connect to. Specifically, these systems operate in either the UHF, DECT, or 2.4 gigahertz frequency bands. And each of them have pros and cons that you'll need to consider when determining what's right for your application. But regardless of what you're using, all of Sennheiser's wireless systems come equipped with an auto-scanning or pairing feature, making them easy to set up right out of the box. Wireless systems can be a deep dive, but for today, here are some general differences among transmission types. 2.4 gigahertz systems like XS Wireless Digital transmit audio on the same frequency as Wi-Fi. They're affordable, easy to set up, and can be used anywhere in the world, which makes them perfect if you're new to wireless audio. These are a great choice when your channel count is low and you need a simple setup. It's important to keep in mind, however, 2.4 gigahertz is license-free, so you might be competing with devices on the same frequencies, which could limit range and performance. Decked Gear operates in the 1.9 gigahertz band, which shares some of the advantages of 2.4 gigahertz systems without being nearly as crowded, making it even more reliable. Systems like AVX are designed to blend professional audio quality with plug and play functionality. We don't always have the privilege of working with a crew, so a system like AVX can help take the guesswork out of your audio setup, allowing you to focus on the shot. The most critical applications, UHF systems like Evolution Wireless G4 add even more range, reliability, and control. They allow you to tune systems to specific frequencies, which makes them the most flexible option for professional use. Because of these advantages, UHF is the industry standard and the best choice when you need uncompromised audio. The only catch is, the frequency ranges available for use around the world vary so make sure to check with local regulations when working abroad. 
Regardless of the wireless system, good loft placement will always be the biggest part of good sound. As a general rule, it's best to place lav mics over the stern, much higher, and the chin will actually obscure high frequencies, and you'll start getting resonance from the throat that results in a muffled sound. Too low, and your subject will sound distant or quiet. If you don't mind seeing the mic, using a tie bar style clip is the easiest way to keep it in the right spot. You can loop the cable back through the tie bar and use the dedicated cable holders to secure it, which isolates the mic from handling noise and makes the cable look nicer on your talent. If you need lavs to be invisible, a lot of the art that goes into concealing them honestly comes down to improvising placement, using purpose-built accessories for hiding mics, and being really creative with tape. It's best to use hypoallergenic tape, but if all you've got is some gaffer's tape, it can go a long way. The sternum is still a great place to hide a mic. Chest shape can help obscure placement under a shirt or clothing. For most situations, you'll want to create a small strain relief loop just below the mic. Use tape to hold it in place, but make sure you wrap it with the sticky side out. Fold two strips of tape into two small triangles, again with the sticky side out, and then sandwich the mic between them. Adhere one side to the first layer of cloth or button seam and tape the wire in place below. Then, simply button the shirt as normal or put on the next layer of clothing and press it into place over the lav. The tape will keep the mic in place while preventing cloth rustle. You can also hide mics inside buttonholes using less tape, but for more challenging clothing with less fabric or fewer hiding spots, I'd highly recommend using purpose-built expendables for hiding lavaliers. Accessories like stickies and adhesive lav concealers can be used directly on talent's skin. There are also silicone mic covers for under fabric and clips for bras or bathing suits that are made specifically for challenging recording situations. Some content may call for more creativity though. If you're recording in a car, lavs can be hidden in sun visors or parts of the dashboard. They're small enough to secure in hat brims and hairlines, hide in props like a hollowed out pen in a shirt pocket, or planting in a table centerpiece. It really comes down to working with the elements that you're filming. Because wireless lavs allow you to mic as many people as your recorder has channels, you can think outside the box and consider unusual perspectives. You can place them in static locations without worrying about cables being visible, or keep them attached to anyone you need to hear for as long as you're shooting. Just remember to be mindful of battery life. Especially when you're using multiple wireless kits at once, you'll want to watch the power indicators on each unit's display. One last trick for shooting simpler setups like interviews. If you use an omnidirectional lav, try turning it upside down. It'll still pick up clear audio since omnis respond to sound in all directions, and it'll cut down on plosives and sibilance by keeping the capsule naturally protected. That way, you can solve those issues at the mic so you don't have to worry about them in the edit. Now that you've seen a few of these ideas, let's listen to some lav mics and actually hear how placement can affect sound quality. I'm currently using four MKE-2s. These mics are identical, but one is placed too high, one at the optimal height, another concealed in the same spot with a cap that boosts high frequencies, and one that I'll be holding too low. Now, you've been listening to a combination of this lav and the boom for this whole video. This is just the raw lav by itself. No mixing and no processing. It's a bit of a different sound, especially without the polish that can be added in post. Compare this to the lav with the high boost cap. Depending on the clothing you're concealing the lav under, this could be a much better starting point to get to the right place in the mix. And again, it's important to get these mics in the right place where you can run into issues. Too high, and you'll experience much less of a natural and desirable sound than before. Your subject's chin can actually block the high frequencies of their voice, and you'll get resonance from their throat that just doesn't sound very good. If the mic is too low, the voice will sound distant and thin because you're not picking up the same balance of chest resonance, articulation, and space that lavs are meant to capture. That's why the sternum gives you a great starting point, not only for high quality raw audio, but for the flexibility in the mix with processing or even layering with a boom mic to make everything you record sound natural. 
Like I said before, great lavalier techniques really come down to preparation and improvisation. But by considering how you want your audio to sound before you record it, you'll be able to place the right mics in the right positions with the right accessories, no matter what content you're creating. For more information on lav mics and techniques, check out the links in the description or head over to Sennheiser's website. And no matter what sound situation you find yourself in, never underestimate the power of a well-placed piece of tape.